Howdy my friends, my name is Gunnar Clovis, I'm a game developer, and today I would like to look at this little demo. So what's wrong with this picture? This is a very simple Windows demo exported out of Game Maker Studio 2. So you can see there we hover over, it gives a file description, uh, it says networkdemo.exe, and it has this uh, default black and white Game Maker logo. We open it up and it says made in Game Maker Stud. Uh, it's would say Game Maker Studio 2 if we had the full text, but it's in this really small window. It works fine. We're not here to judge the content, just the presentation. And so yeah, game runs fine. It's just a very simple peer-to-peer -peer networking demo, which is not the point of this. The point is that look how tiny the screen is. Look at my the overall picture of my computer. And it's this tiny piddly piddly and it has this default logo, default icon of Game Maker, and just says get made in Game Maker. It's not the name of the game, and even the, the EXE itself. It's network demo. I mean, that's okay for our context, but way too often. I play a lot of Game Jam games, a lot of itch.io games, and they look like this. They often have small windows, maybe not this exaggeratedly small, uh, but then like default icons, whether it's for Game Maker or the default Unity icon or Construct or Love, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Just the default icon, often not even a descriptive name for the build or EXE, and very, very often default title in the window. And then I can't maximize it. It doesn't start in full screen. So these are all problems. And they're kind of, <laughs> they're really easy problems to resolve, which is why I have such an issue with them. So let's uh, just clear this out. So this is the um, IDE for Game Maker Studio 2, which uh, gives that build. I'm going to be running it with a VM output. So we click over here. This shows Windows, and we can select from VM for Virtual Machine, or YYC for YoYo -Yo Compiler. Uh, VM, basically, it's using interpreted code instead of compiled code, so it's going to compile faster. When I click the Run button, it's going to start playing faster, but then the code, the game itself, is going to be ever so slightly less optimized, a little, a little slower than it would be with a YYC. That doesn't really matter. It's a Game Maker-specific thing. Um, you'll probably have a similar thing regardless of your engine. But here, if we have our blank project or a finished game, like if we just treat this like it's a finished game, has a bunch of assets, has a bunch of rooms, uh, a couple of rooms, but we want to fix those issues. So what we do is we hit this button, Game Options. It's a little gear in the um, about the center of this, uh, this top bar. And this opens it up, we get to Game Options Main. Here we have a bunch of stuff here. We can set the frames per second. Pretty much always want that as, as 60 and a bunch of other stuff that's not relevant for us. What we want to do is change the platform settings. So if we click for Windows specifically, go over to the sub window. So you can do this is the same thing for everything else for Mac, Linux, uh, HTML, Android, whatever it is. It's going to do a very similar process. So we over, open this up. And here we have our product information. So this is really important. It's very simple. Again, these are very simple changes. This is our display name. So this is what's shown in the window. That's why it said made in Game Maker Studio 2. We don't want that. Uh, we want to have our game name. I'll just call it Network Demo for this case, because this is not a full game. Uh, so that's going to show it as the as, as network demo instead of as made in Game Maker Studio 2 when we run it. So that, that instantly makes it appear a lot more professional. Here is some other information. This isn't as important, but you see, yeah, we have company, product, copyright, description. This is what shows up when you hover over it a little bit. So you get file description, you get company. You get a bit of that information, and you get more of that information if you open up the properties and, and mess around here. Um, so yeah, we can set that as well. I don't spend a ton of time with that. I tend to just copy over the game title to the product and description and then say like 2020 uh, my name, which is Gunnar Clovis. <laughs> and then I just copy that over. So that's not really important. Um, you know, if you're being more formal, if you're actually publishing this, get some more proper, uh, more detailed information here. But that helps immediately as well, because then it's not showing up as just a default Game Maker export. And again, these are this is the Game Maker specific thing, but this applies to every game engine. It applies to Unity, applies to Unreal, applies to Construct, no matter what you're doing, there's gonna be a very similar process. 
probably from something that says game options or similar. So that's in the general tab of the Windows game options. If we go over to graphics, here we have a bunch of booleans. The only one by the display by default is display cursor. That's enabled by default. Then we have start full screen, allow full screen switching, interpolate colors, use synchronization to avoid tearing, window resize, allowance, and borderless window. So these are all pretty simple. There's also, we can set the scaling from keep aspect ratio or full scale. So what do, what do all these mean? So these change, yeah, our graphic settings for the game. So when I run it, as it is currently, it's gonna show up as it did with uh, just this really small window. It does say network demo now, so that's nice. That's really, really cool. Instantly makes it a lot more readable. It's, it was really ugly how the name went off the screen, basically off, off the display area, um, but it's still really small. So what we can do is we can say allow full screen switching and we'll also say allow window resize. So actually full screen switching, what that's going to do is um, let us use some code later. But if we say allow window resize, we'll see an instant usage of that that when you run it again, instead of this middle button being grayed out, now it's clickable. So this is the maximize button. So it still starts in a really small window, but we can hit this, there it maximizes. Now this is not full screen because I still see, you know, the name, the top bar of it with the uh, with the close button and my, um, my computer taskbar. Still see that, which I don't like as much, but this is a lot better. This is instantly, um, a lot, a lot less grading. Um, you know, this is a very low resolution game specifically, but this is uh, really, really important for building games of all resolutions and aspect ratios. Gets you, uh, yeah, a lot more immersed in it. It makes it so there's no distractions from the desktop or file explorer behind it. Really important change. And so we can toggle that. And then because we said allow window resize, it also lets us drag these borders. So I grab that and I can resize it to whatever I want. And when I let go, you see it resizes the window. Here it actually didn't change it because we have the scaling set to keep aspect ratio. So I made the window really long, like a really long landscape image, uh, but it's not stretching because I don't have it set to full scale. I have keep aspect ratio, so it just adds bars. But I can customize it and see there, it'll adapt perfectly. There, almost no bars. If I put a little taller, they don't start to do bars on the top. So it's a uh, very dynamic game makers handling that all for you. Uh, really nice, really nice. And then if we say start full screen, this will start the game properly full screen, which is what I recommend. I recommend having all these settings start full screen, allow full screen switching and allow window resize just all the time. So see now everything's blocked out. This now looks like a professional game or a lot closer to it than it was before. Uh, you know, when you play Call of Duty, of course, there are options to play it windowed, but you don't tend to play games, at least by default, in a windowed mode. You play them full screen because it's a lot more immersive. These other options, interpolate colors and use synchronization to avoid tearing, uh, are useful and important. Generally, uh, I don't use them because I'm not making very high quality graphics games. Honestly, I, I, game makers most often use for like pixel art games. And that's all I really tend to do most of the time. Um, aside from my work, in my work I, I do tend to use interpolation. Um, but yeah, you can experiment with that. I mean, it's free to just uh, toggle it on and off, test it. You can also set these values with code. Borderless window would make the window borderless. I prefer having the border because that lets me, you know, maximize and close it out and all that stuff. Uh, so that's instantly looking a lot better and a lot more professional. The other thing is we can set an icon. This images tab lets us set the icon or a splash screen. Uh, splash screens are not enabled by default. I actually do like to use these, especially in the games I make for my work. I tend to take like the first screen of the game, maybe put like a filter over it and then say like now loading. And then I use that. And then that image will show up immediately when you click on the exe while the game proper loads. So that's really nice. You can also do some detailed stuff with the installer that requires some very specific dimensions. It's pretty easy to follow. Uh, this is what you would do to make a very professional game. Normally for a game you'd make for a game jam, it's much better to export as an executable. Uh, but if you ever want to make an installer, such as when you're, say, uh, getting a game yeah, for, for sale, maybe putting it on Steam, something like that, uh, an installer would be a lot more, uh, much more preferable. 
but I want to set an icon. This is the last thing, the trifecta of things that I really like to see when I'm starting up an itch.io game jam game is I like to see it full screen. I like to see it uh, have a custom window title and a custom exe uh, title, and I like to see custom icons. So here, this would let us choose uh, in a ICO file. So that's .ico. These are special files, special image files that allow us to yes set program icons. So what um, you would ideally want to do is, of course, make a custom icon for your game that's very professional. You know, look at anything else. Look at the Unity's icon. Look at Game Maker's icon. Audacity, Photoshop, OBS, uh, HitFilm, RenPy, Twine, VLC, uh, the Microsoft Office programs, Chrome. These all have these very nice, professional, simple icons with transparency, so they have a unique shape. It's very good. Uh, and that's ideally what you want to do, of course. But in light of that, um, or rather in lieu of that, just using one of your assets from the game can be so useful in just making the game immediately appear a little bit more professional, a little bit more customized. So I'm just going to copy over a sprite from the game. I'll name that uh, robot, robot man, doesn't, ma doesn't actually matter. And then we can convert this to an ICO file from a PNG. So in any major program, so your GIMPs, your Photoshops, or your Paint.nets, like I like to use, you can save it as an ICO file. I actually, I think Paint.net actually does not save as ICO files by default, but the reason I really love Paint.net really is because it has such an active uh, and easy modding community. Uh, so I have you know a ton of plugins installed for Paint.net. Pretty sure this is one of them if it's not in by default. So I can hit set set that. I'll call it icon to ICO. Doesn't really matter. Save that uh, in Paint.net's case, it opens up this little dialog box, set some sizes. Um, it was starting at 32, so I'll just leave it like, like that. And there we go. Now we have an ICO file. Uh, this can also be achieved if you go and search for a free online PNG to ICO file converter. There are a lot of these. I used to use these before um, I really knew what I was doing when I was uh, very young. And so, yeah, uh, Icona Convert, um, Samzar, any of these, um, I think it was Converted IO. Yeah, there's, I feel like it was Converticon was a, uh, was a website I used to use a lot of, uh, a long time ago. But any of these just lets you upload a PNG, JPEG, whatever it is, and then convert into an icon file for use in a program within Game Maker or Unity or Unreal or Love2D or Construct, whatever it is you're using, does not matter. Uh, so that's really useful. So then I can set my icon by clicking this. I go over, navigate to it, click it, and there we go. And now when I run the program, we are running in virtual machines, so this actually might be a little different. Um, yeah, this is I also set it to start in full screen. Uh, so something we can do, as I mentioned, is change these values with code, which is really useful, particularly for starting full screen. Uh, so in my object player, in pretty much any Game Maker game I make, and this is again the exact same thing in Unity Unreal, and I've used a lot of engines in my time, uh, it's the exact same kind of thing. I have an if statement for if keyboard, <laughs> keyboard check pressed, if I can type, um, and I say VK for virtual keyboard F11. So this is going to be true. This is going to make whatever's in this if statement run if and only if the F11 key on the keyboard is pressed. So that's the one frame that it transitions from being up to down. Uh, and then in that case, I want to set a window full screen. So I can go window set full screen. And uh, I could, of course, keep a variable that I toggle back and forth, but it's much easier if I just say when uh, it's window set full screen to not window get full screen. So this will get the value of the full screen window, uh, whether or not it is full screen, and then set it to the opposite. And then just like that, I also like to say VK escape for the escape key and then game end. This is generally the first two lines of code I add to pretty much any game I make uh, in whatever order. And so that's really useful. Um, when we run that, we can see that even though the game starts in full screen or again in those options, we could set it to not start in full screen by default. Hit F11. Oh no. <laughs> 
Oh no. All right. Well, okay. I was. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I put that. I put that on the object player. So yeah, that only works when I'm in game. In this case, hit F11, and it toggles between full screen and non full screen seamlessly. Works great. Doesn't matter. And yeah, and then if we compile this, so I will set this now to YYC. This is generally what you want to do. I you generally will run in virtual machine when you're running the game in the editor for testing so that it loads quickly. But you want to set it to YYC when you're going to build an executable. So I'm going to set YYC create executable network demo. I have a builds folder as always. And I'll say network demo uh, v2. This will build uh, take a, about 20 seconds. So again, these are, of course, I'm showing the steps for GameMaker Studio 2, but this is going to be pretty much identical if you're using an earlier version of GameMaker, Unity, Unreal, uh, even RenPy. Uh, it's going to be pretty similar. Oh, did that work or did it crash? Seems like it's fine. Yeah, success. Okay. It just kind of ended up really quickly there. Uh, and then I'm going to extract this and we will see it's the exact same game, except we have a little custom icon now. That looks so much better, so much more professional. Now run it, starts in full screen, uh, although this one is a network game, so it wants me to do that first. <laughs> uh, genuinely wouldn't do that. And uh, yeah. Oh no. <sighs> because it was a network game running for the first time, it was upset there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. This is genuinely how it would work, open and full screen. Generally, uh, you would be making a network game for a game jam, right? Uh, but yeah, there, uh, really simple. Uh, this is a very simple tutorial, but I just really wanted to cover this because this is something I just see all the time with game jam games that I play for game jams that I run and game jams that I host. Uh, and especially online, such as with this YouTube channel, such as for Itchy for Jam, or when I'm judging games for uh, different Itch.io game jam. It's, uh, very, very simple, but very important, and uh, has a lot more impact than you would think. Uh, this kind of icon, exact same process, applies to every other platform besides Windows. You just go over here to the Windows options, Mac OS, basically the exact same things. Um, <laughs> Android. Uh, which is mainly what I export for my work. A little bit better uh, icon system. You do adaptive icons, but same thing. You have those graphic shop options. Uh, you set your set your icons. You set the app title, um, the display name, whatever it is. It's very important. HTML5, the exact same thing. Um, and yeah, that is it for this video. I am going to be trying to do a tutorial like this or better every Saturday at least. I am uploading a video every single day in 2020. I took a little bit of a break there because of uh, COVID-19 and being a little burnt out, but I'm back uh, trying to do those daily uploads, doing a variety of content tutorials, more gameplay videos of itch.io games from you guys and some uh, bigger games experiment with that and then some weirder content maybe some music stuff if i feel like it we'll see uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching my name is gunner clovis uh yeah please keep marching towards your dreams if you are on a game development journey please tell me about it i'd love to play any of your games drop me a link in the comments if you have a topic you'd like me to you'd like me to cover <laughs> in a game dev tutorial please let me know just contact me again May, leave a comment. Uh, you can also contact me on Discord, follow me on Twitter. Very accessible in all those locations. And yeah, I hope to see you soon. I cannot wait to see what you're making. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.